Um, Yoko orchestrated, as she did, the trip for him with her psychic directionalists and her tarot people. She told John exactly where to go. Now, it's very strange that she was planning a divorce right then. Where, where does she send John? She sends him through the Devil's Triangle in hurricane season in a 40-foot sloop. You know, I mean, that would have been the most glorious, from her, her perspective, climax to, to, uh, to a storied life. John Lennon disappears in the Devil's Triangle. Now, this may sound like nonsense to a lot of people, but, but Yoko took this very seriously. She's deep into the metaphysical, uh, in, into the metaphysical realm and takes these things very seriously, you know. Um, this is, so uh, instead this... of divorcing him, he disappears in the Devil's Triangle. Um, so, yeah. You know, just the thought, where would she go without John? She was nothing. The thought of her leaving him, this is so bizarre. And, but I do remember that period when he was well, kind she of like was, a house she, she felt quite confident that um, uh, they were working on, on her album right then. I mean, they, they, um, Double Fantasy had just come out. I think it had been out for like three or four weeks. And they were working on Walking on Thin Ice, I believe, and they, they, they were quite convinced it was going to be a hit. She was very, very optimistic. So she thought that basically she had, she had gotten all that she could out of John in terms of helping launch her career, and now she was done. And also, John was a difficult, difficult guy to live with. You know, very moody, very volatile, and, and he, he called Yoko mother, and there, there's no mistake because she was an incredible mother figure for him. She didn't want to be a mother. She wasn't a mother type, you know, and she was sick of mothering John. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, this is a great... Back to, it all goes back to his childhood. He was abandoned right. by his mother when he was five. So much information. Just hold on, Dave. It's Rock and Roll, a story of David Comfort, the Rock and Roll Book of the Dead, Fatal Journeys of Rock's Seven Immortals, and that's also the website, rock and roll book of the dead dot com. Eight six six four eight two one zero one one. Any questions about any of these people? It's Elvis Lennon, Janis Joplin, Morrison, Hendrix, Cobain, Garcia. Talking to rock and roll historian David Comfort, the rock and roll book of the dead, the fatal journeys of rock's seven immortals, 866-482-1011. Any questions you have, 866-482-1011. And then later, for those of you Twittering, I have uh, an interesting guest. This, she's really, I saw her on TV and I said, wow, she just, she hits it on the head. A lot of us, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook. We utilize it, but we're doing a lot of things wrong. And she says, if you want to maximize uh, sales and make some money, you need to use it correctly. Branding. Actually, she has a name for it. I think it's called Power Connecting. So we'll talk to her how to use Twitter and Facebook to make money and be effective. Okay, let's go back to David. 866-482-1011. The period we were talking about with John Lennon when she was about, she was going to leave him and was it around the time they recorded this song, or was this song during Better Days, David? Um, well, you, you know, um, on Double Fantasy, and, and, and it shows John's real bipolar nature. Uh, he sings, I'm losing you, you know, because he kind of knows it. And then he, and then he sings this incredibly sweet, optimistic uh, starting over. You know, yeah, uh, and and so he was caught between those two poles, and uh, it was it was eating him up. You know, um, but getting back to the theme of, of of Yoko and Courtney, I mean, both of them felt like they were at least the equal to their husbands, if if not their superior, um, and and so the jealousy and the, and the competitiveness, and especially in the case of Yoko. You know, I mean, take Yoko and her background. First of all. Yoko was was a Japanese aristocrat. I mean, she she came from um, 
the premier banking family of Japan, like almost J.P. Morgan family. She went to school with the crown princes. One of them had a crush on her, and and she was she was she was the ultimate patrician. I mean, John was middle class at best, uh, lower middle class probably, and he was a dropout from a small uh, art college. Uh, Yoko went to the finest colleges. She went to Sarah Lawrence. She got involved in serious art way before. I mean, when John was just doing, you know, I want to hold your hand and less than that, you know. So she uh, she was wondering, well, John Lennon's got the world. He's made it. What, what the hell, you know? What, what's happening with me? Nothing, you know? And so there was a strong feeling of, of resentment there and, and competition. Um, well, and just, this, to, just, pipe, just to pace, just to pace yourself, we got a hard break in about uh, twenty seconds here. So, if you just want to pause, we got another hour left. David Comfort, boy, I can tell this guy's been so immersed in this for ten years of research on this. Uh, this kind of a depressing subject, but fascinating at the same time. The Rock and Roll Book of the Dead, 866-482-1011. We're going to be taking your calls. Any questions you have about any of these rock stars or in general, you know, what this is caused by, you know, what happens in your childhood, whatever. 866-482-1011 or Twitter.com. It's the Alan Handelman Show. FM Talk 101.1 WZTK. I bought a house in the Hollywood Hills with a trunk load of hundred thousand dollar bills. Man came by to look at my cable TV. We settled in for the night, my baby. It's good to have you here. It's our number two. And coming up, we're going to talk about a lot of people on Twitter. It's a big thing. Everyone has fun. But how do you really make money? How do you make it something that can pay off in Facebook? We're going to talk to a social networking expert. She coaches the Fortune 500 companies how to get involved. They're a little behind the curve when it comes to uh, Twitter and Facebook. Anyway, she has this thing called uh, Power Connecting, how to make money. We'll find out next hour. Right now, rock and roll historian David Comfort, the rock and roll Book of the Dead, The Fatal Journeys of Rock Seven Immortals. And we're talking about Jimi Hendrix and John Lennon and... Uh, Jerry Garcia, Kirk Cobain, Elvis Presley. Any questions you have, 866-482-1011. 866-482-1011. Right before the break there, Dave, you were wrapping up uh, some interesting stories about Lennon. Then I want to move on to a, a, another uh, figure. Go ahead, if you can recall, finish what you were about to say. Yeah, I was I was just saying um, about John Lennon um, in the context of Yoko that um, Yoko really felt that she was his uh, his equal creatively, if not his superior, and there was a there was a good deal of resentment uh, because of that. And you know, in a sense, it's it, it's funny that um, that John Lennon. Uh, often people think, well, he could have had his pick of any woman in the world. Why did he pick Yoko? You know, um, and there is a reason for that. Yoko, I mean, he really admired her independent as a very, very creative artist. Um, he, he met her, in an, at, at, her at her um, art gallery, actually, when he was... Um when they were um, doing Sgt. Pepper's, and he was enormously impressed with her. He was married at the time, of course, to Cynthia, but Cynthia was, was a rather uh, prosaic person, uh, at least as far as John was concerned, not particularly creative, not challenging. And Yoko was, was, uh, was just the opposite. Um, and Yoko got a handle on John because, I mean, she said, John, what are you doing with the Beatles? You know, you can do so much better than this. You are so much more creative than them. And she, she you know, she had contempt for 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 McCartney's a pop kind of sound and and she thought John could do oh, stuff man. profound you know truly profound among the greatest artists of the century and of course she considered herself one of them and John ate that up um, and what John always wanted to do when he left the Beatles was to become as big as the Beatles as he said take the world over again become the emperor of the world uh, on his own without without the support of three other guys now that that never happened, and it was an enormous regret to him. And, and strangely enough, it goes for most of the other stars here. You know, it seems like they 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 had the world, they achieved everything a person could dream of, and yet met many of them died with really profound regrets. That's the uh, common thread, usually involving drugs in some way, but it's much more than that. It's it's the the relationships, it's the disappointment. Uh, yeah. You know, trauma from childhood, I guess that's what they all have in common. 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, but I, then, then you look at, at two of the childhoods, though, and you think, well, where's the trauma there? And, and I'm thinking of um, Janis Joplin and Jim, and, and Jim Morrison. Um, let's take Jim Morrison, uh, upper middle class. His, his, uh, his father was the youngest admiral in the Marines. Uh, made a good deal of money, um, very fond.